G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures and today we're checking out this little bad boy right here. Now this is the LT105 and uh, I know I've been reviewing a lot of these in the past. I've done the QX90, the QX80 and I've done some of the Tiny Whoop sort of clones. But this one I'm pretty excited about because uh, it has a bit of a special feature that I can't wait to be uh, ripping it around outside as well as indoors. So uh, it should be pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, it's a super little brushed 105 millimeter uh, tiny micro FPV quadcopter with a full F3 board. We're going to stick it on the bench, talk about it a little bit, and then uh, we're going to take it and rip it outside and have a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, let's check it out. Alrighty, so here's everything you're going to get in the kit and uh, obviously you get the quad itself and let's talk about the little bits about the boring parts you get and then we'll jump in and have a bit of a closer look here. So you're going to get two 1S uh, batteries, they're 600 milliamp hour batteries so you're going to get two of those which is nice which means you can fly one uh, while your other one is charging and you're probably going to get anywhere between three and three and five minutes depending on how you're flying this little bad boy. So let's put them to the side. Now to charge that you get one of these sort of cheap, uh, cheap little balancing plugs and that just plugs into your cheap charger and you can uh, charge those up over there and you also get something for taking your props on and off so a little prop tool and it's important to use these because someone asked me what's the difference between just ripping one of these off and uh, using this tool but sometimes if you're trying to rip the prop off what I have seen happen is people rip the whole motor accidentally out of the bottom just here and that actually puts a little strain on the wires and sometimes you can rip them total, totally off and uh, bust your motor so if you've got the tool definitely use it so uh and speaking of the props you get some of these little ones right here now i don't know how to actually say this name uh lantian i i think anyway but uh it's actually kind of seems like a little bit of overkill actually to get uh some of these tiny little props in such some fancy packaging so we'll open those up and have a bit of a quick squeeze at those as well Alrighty, now it is good that you get two sets uh and we should probably compare these to some sort of standard hubs and blades so i'll get some hubs and blades out as well Rightio, so uh, here's the blades and you can see they're a little bit bigger actually than the standard Hubson blade which is kind of cool because that is important on the 105 because you actually have a little bit more room. Your arms are a little bit longer which means you're allowed to swing a bit of a bigger prop and that's exactly what they've given you here. Uh, on the standard Hubson prop uh, they've got a little tapered end but right here we've got a bullnose prop so we should be getting a lot more thrust off these uh, tiny little motors. And one thing to note as well, one significant difference in here, you can see the whole goes all the way through the motor so I know a bit of an issue that some people have had and I've seen and I've had it with some of my props is once you put them on sometimes uh, they can actually fly off mid-flight so at least with these ones you are able to push it all the way down completely down and then I guess you might even be able to put a little bit of a uh, hot glue on the top or something just there if you are uh, really really were concerned about them flying off anyway so that's enough about the props and the other boring parts let's jump in and have a bit of a closer look at the LT 105 and and I can tell you why I'm so excited. Right here, so before we go any further, let's weigh this little bad boy here. Now I'm weighing it without the props, without a receiver, and without a battery, so straight as it comes, and it's coming in at 36 grams. So fairly, fairly light, very, very comparable weight to the QX90 and also the QX80. Now, uh, if we have a look here, like I mentioned before, the span between these two motors is 105 millimeters, so it is a little bit bigger, and you probably will notice that if you're flying it around indoors, uh, it might feel a little bit of a, a bigger craft because uh, you've got a sort of larger span between the motors. Um, towards the front right here uh, you have your little 40 channel VTX and this is a 25 milliwatt VTX. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky to change the dip switches on here because you will need to take the top plate off which is something that is significantly different uh, to its other QX size brothers. Uh, one little cool thing on the spans of the arms you've got some tiny little holes if you do want to, did want to add some LEDs or some extra little modifications and these are actually held in with some little rubber grommets which seem to hold the motors really really well. Now speaking of the motors, they are the 8.5 millimeter motors, which means they're going to be a little bit more powerful than the things that are in the tiny whoop. But in saying that, they will also suck more juice, so they'll suck a little bit more juice down. On the inside right here, we have an F3 sort of uh, brushed SP board. So this is actually running clean flight. And to be honest, look, I've been flying the QX90 and the QX80 around and one of these. Uh, they have all got clean flight on them and they're the only craft I've ever decided to fly without upgrading to beta flight. I really, I really look, I, I probably should upgrade to beta flight and it's not too easy. But the same thing happened to my friend who was flying one of these around. They just work so well out of the box. 
Uh, you don't need to do any tuning or anything. They're just rock solid and they're, they're still using clean flight, but they fly great. So they are very, very stable little flyers. Now the battery simply clicks underneath right here, or clicks I should say, you've got two little rubber bands and these two little parts just here, so that's just simply going to slide in under there, so it's a very very easy sort of little mod. And then the part I want to actually talk about, the reason I'm excited is because this is actually built very different to the QX90 and uh, also the QX80. So what you actually have on this version is a little top plate. This looks much more traditional I guess to the standard little frames that we're used to seeing. If you look at my little QX90 right here, you can see that's sort of like uh, it's all built up and uh, sitting on the VTX right there. And if you look at my QX80, you can see, well, that's a totally different sort of little square shape right there. So this, this quad right here is much more traditional, a traditional looking quad. And this right here is the reason why I am super pumped to have one of these fly around. I can stick this whole, this is a D4R2, yeah, I've taken off the, the plastic, the paper that comes around the outside, but look, you can make it even smaller and remove the pins, which is what I want to plan to do. This is my old receiver off one of my first quads. Now, it's missing an antenna, but you are going to get significantly better range than using the tiny little receivers that are in these things. So, the size of this, the, the size of the LT105, you can actually fit in uh, your receiver give or take a little bit look it does depend on this but it does fit the d4r2 perfectly which is great because i fly a tyrannus and what i'm going to do once i take these pins out i'm going to be able to put this in here and i'm going to be able to have insane range on my little micro so i'm going to be able to take this not only flight around the house and not worry about any dropouts or brownouts or anything like that but i can take it out to the park and actually fly to the anywhere that i could actually fly my full-sized uh, quad so i'm super excited to be able to build a little quad that can actually hold a receiver so well. It's gonna fit so nice and snug in there. And then they've also got this little part at the back. I intend to uh, have a little zip tie for some protection and add, uh, so it can protect my VTX and also serve as a little awesome sort of aerial or uh, some sort of holder for my uh, little antenna right here. So that is why I'm so excited because this thing is gonna be amazing. I'm just thinking of uh, Charlie at the park is gonna absolutely froth on this thing. He loves the quads as they are. And I always worry a little bit about the range, but by, by being able the size that this is and being able to put in a full size receiver it is going to be absolutely awesome so i'm going to uh, install that right now and then we'll cut and see what it looks like and put the props on and give it a bit of a way and then we'll take it out and uh, give it a little bit of a spin Alrighty, so uh here it is and uh, i didn't plan on doing this i plan on running a little zip tie up here for my antenna right here but actually it worked out to be an awesome little way of protecting my vtx so you can see uh it's looking very very nice the D4R2 that is in here fits perfect like it is absolutely nice and snug so very very well protected uh, so I can't wait to uh, take this thing outside and thrash it around let's check it out let's chuck it on the scales and see how much it weighs now this is without its battery and all the mods and the receiver in it as well so it's coming in at 42 grams if I put that let's compare that so if I put my QX90, uh, QX80, that's coming in at 41 grams. And then I think the QX90 is a little bit lighter at 39 grams. So really only three grams difference between the uh, the lightest one we have right here and the uh, LT105. But of course, the beauty about this one is it's rocking a full-size receiver. So uh, this is probably what I'm gonna be using to exercise the dog. So let's do that now. Let's uh, take it to a little oval and uh, do some laps with the dog. Right here, so here we are at the local little dog park at the Oval Around, and this thing was surprisingly quick. Uh, as soon as I punched that throttle there, it was off. So uh, that was very, very surprising. But I must say, it was an extra windy day today, so maybe I did have some gusts of wind behind me. Uh, so I had Charlie out here with the park at me as well, and you'll have to forgive me because the flying almost killed myself there, ran into the back of my head. The flying is uh, nothing too special, but uh, just the main reason I wanted to take you out here and fly around was so you can see this range. So look how far this is going. This is going like the entire length of an AFL field. That's like the Australian sort of football that we play over here. And it is like, it is a massive, uh, that is a massive distance. There's no way that I could get there on any of my other micros. This thing would have fallen out of the sky well before that. I'm way over there, sort of like in the distance in that pole in the middle of the screen uh, right about there so that is a huge distance that I've uh, covered right there with this tiny little micro which is awesome 
Now I'm taking it up here and you really can see that it's getting sort of battered by the wind. I'm really having to uh, sort of punch it forwards or tilt very, very far forwards to uh, sort of hold my position. And this is in acro, so it's fine at doing little flips and everything like that, but it's just as easy to stick it into horizon mode. And that's probably what I'd do if I was going to be floating around, uh, floating around inside the house. But I thought while I was out here in the field, let's definitely stick it in acro. I think I get a couple of dogs chasing me just here as well. Uh, and the beauty about this thing is you can fly it around and there were some people there and there's no way I could do this if I had any of my larger sort of brush cords. Even the Atom or something around uh, here would definitely be uh, a bit concerning and a bit a bit unsafe with these other people around. But when you're flying something as tiny as these micros, uh, everyone was laughing and having a good time and watching the dogs chase them. So they're absolutely loving them. It felt fine to fly it on clean flight, very, 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 very responsive. Uh, the rates were actually surprisingly high, so uh, I guess, or, or more, let, I guess, not as docile as I was expecting, so that's something that I was, I guess, a pleasant surprise for me because I like my rates a little bit higher usually than the defaults. Um, and and I don't really see any option that I'm going to upgrade this to beta flight. I know I probably should, but it really doesn't hassle me too much at all because it flies great, uh, it feels great. So that might be uh, fantastic for people who aren't really too confident at flashing different firmwares and stuff to their board. They just want a tiny little micro that they can take out and uh, get flying. So this is it directly out of the box. I love this shot here with Charlie chasing behind me. He was having such a good time chasing this thing around. But uh, the silly puppy went the wrong way here. So uh, one day I want to fly all around the outside of this oval. I think that'd be that'd be really fun to have him chasing me. The only real issue I have, I think, is just how much it's affected by the wind. So other than the, because uh, it's so small and so light, you really do have to, uh, if there's any gusts of wind or anything like that, it's definitely uh, a lot more harder to control. But if, uh, if, if it was nice weather outside or you're flying around indoors, this thing would be perfect. So there it is, there's my review of the LT-105 and uh, for its size I think it's got awesome performance and uh, speaking of that size, that little top plate and the ability to put in any receiver that you like so easily is definitely a massive plus. So if you're looking for a quadcopter you can fly around the park or indoors, this is definitely one for you. And also, you don't have to do any firmware flashing or anything like that because it rocks on clean flight and I rarely say that. But uh, so far on clean flight, look, I'm sure it would fly better on beta flight, but it is perfectly flyable on clean flight. So that's a massive plus for anybody who doesn't like to sort of do that firmware flashing. You can just take this out of the box, uh, stick a battery in, put your receiver in, and you are off, off to the races. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more FPV related content. I'm gonna leave a link for one of these little guys down below in the description. And as always, happy flying. Big plus for this one is uh, its size. So even though it's, it's that little bit bigger, which usually doesn't sound like a good thing, um... <laughs>